Ten years ago, I moved to Miami. Miami is an amazing city full of life and excitement. Miami is also a city of great racial and ethnic diversity. People from all over the world call Miami home and make it a wonderful place to live. I began serving at Trinity Church in Miami Gardens and was soon fully engaged with the children of Trinity and the community. We started a child care center and then a preschool and are now growing an elementary school. What a wonderful time it's been learning to love and appreciate the children and community that I have been called to serve. One Christmas a few years ago, a donor gave me a shipment of dolls to give away. These dolls were all exactly the same except for their skin tones. I was very excited to share these toys and brought them into the children to distribute. Much to my surprise, the little black girls overwhelmingly chose the white or lighter skinned dolls over the dolls that looked like them. This experience reminded me of a research study that I had read back in college that was designed to evaluate racial attitudes and stereotyping in young children. The study was designed by Kenneth Clark and came to be known as the Clark Doll Experiment. The study was conducted to illustrate racial stereotyping in America and how it affects the racial perception of young children at the age of five. In the experiment, Clark showed black children with ages ranging from six to nine, two dolls, one white and the other black, and were asked the following questions in order. Show me the doll that you like best or that you would like to play with. Show me the doll that is the nice doll. Show me the doll that looks bad. Give me the doll that looks like a white child. Give me the doll that looks like a colored child. Give me the doll that looks like a Negro child. Give me the doll that may, looks like you. The researchers found that black children often chose to play with the white dolls more than the black ones. Among the subjects, 44% said the white doll looked like them. This study was concerning to me. I was concerned about the self-image of little black girls and boys in my program and my desire for them to be proud of who they are so that they can go out into their community and contribute to a positive change in our society. This is what my project is about, creating a positive impact in the preschool children in my program so that they will have a godly image of who they are and understand that we are to love God with all our hearts and our neighbors as ourselves. The project I worked on to complete this practicum is a series of lessons for preschool children to encourage inclusion and respect for all people, no matter their race, gender, or culture. Rachel Mateo is a highly qualified early childhood education specialist. She has a master's degree in exceptional children and is completing her doctorate in special education with a focus on autism spectrum disorders. She's a certified teacher and has worked in both public and private schools in Miami. Rachel is uniquely qualified to be my mentor in this project because of her education and professional qualifications, but also because she brings a unique perspective to the topic. Rachel is an overcomer and a survivor. She has endured extreme heartache through her life as a direct result of poverty, racism, cultural limitations, and expectations of society. Our discussions and her reflection on my project continues to be an invaluable contribution. During the preschool years, children begin to build the foundation for who they will be and how they will view the world. We want children to thrive in a diverse world and to not only appreciate each other's differences, but defend anyone's right to respect and tolerance. This curriculum will assist Christian preschool teachers to encourage inclusion and respect for all people, no matter their race, gender, or culture. Our vision is to foster an environment that supports young children as they develop a biblical understanding that no matter the color of a person's skin, their socioeconomic background, or their culture, we are all made in the image of God and are equally important to Him. Our mission is to provide Christian preschool teachers with research-based curriculum that teaches children to respect and honor everyone, no matter what their race or socioeconomic status. The goal of the curriculum is to encourage respect as the positive attitudinal goal and inclusion as the positive behavior goal of intervention. Ezekiel 36:26 says, and I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Our belief statement is, the Bible is the infallible basis for all teaching and learning. All children are made in the image of God and God's word teaches the value and worth of others through the concept of the image of God. 
A worldview comes from the heart and not from the head. Racism is sinful because it denies the value of an image bearer of God based on race, and culture is good and is a part of God's plan. Does racism really exist in preschool? After electing the first black president in 2008, there was hope that racial tension and discrimination in the United States would improve. Over the past eight years, it seems as though the differences between black and white America has only intensified. Those who had hoped for a political answer to the fear and hatred caused by racism have been disappointed. Laws and regulations passed to encourage and even demand racial harmony have failed to create systemic change. The Black Lives Matter movement and the horrible shooting of innocent black church members by a white gunman in Charleston, South Carolina, are a wake-up call for leaders to put more effort into teaching our young people how to appreciate each other and stop the insanity. A substantial amount of literature has been written since the 1940s and 50s when researchers first determined that preschoolers are aware of racial differences and prefer one group over another. The questions emerging from this early research were whether this trend to prefer lighter skin over darker skin was indicative of racism, or was this a learned preference? Did children actually prefer lighter skin because of social status? Some researchers, researchers question whether the Clark Dahl test and other research is actually indicating a racial response or a less concerning alternative. Is it possible that preschool children choose the color white because it is used to symbolize goodness and the color black because it's used to symbolize badness? Further concern in research shows that there are low levels of cross-race friendship and little evidence of voluntary association between groups of children. Children do not try to develop relationships with those in other racial ethnic groups unless they are directed by teachers or other significant adults. Further interpretation of these research studies is needed. However, it is evident that there is a need for teachers, parents, and society to be more intentional in training our children to appreciate their own race as well as others. So what can be done to encourage respect and inclusion? This is where I encountered difficulties on completing my project. The issue of racism and intolerance is extremely complex, and the variety of options for intervention with young children need to be studied in depth. Researchers have attempted to change racial perceptions in young children through a variety of curriculum and interracial programs. Although there's been some success, the general results have been less than satisfactory. Multicultural materials such as stories, textbooks, music, art, and audiovisual materials have been used in curriculum in an attempt to discourage racism and encourage respect and inclusion. It is clear, however, that racial stereotyping is pervasive among children and is resistant to change. There needs to be more research done that incorporates best practices in early childhood education from a learning theory framework rather than a psychology or sociology framework. It may be that researchers have simply misunderstood the developmental ability levels of young children. Anti-bias education focuses on intergroup contact among peers as opposed to multicultural education which normally focuses on the outgroup culture. Anti-bias education encourages children to celebrate each other, to recognize that they are each unique and compare and contrast differences while being inclusive and respectful. There are logical constraints on children's working, on children's thinking, which could potentially cause current multicultural intervention to increase children's racial and ethnic bias via the attention that they draw to other groups. When using multicultural curriculum, the young child's inability to use multiple classification skills is also relevant to children's failure to accurately process and remember counter stereotypic models. I read one of the storybooks that I have um, chosen for the curriculum to some of my preschoolers the other day. I was interested in how they confirmed Piaget's theory that young children find it difficult to hold two concrete classifications at the same time. Listen to how the children identify themselves in the book. And yes, I know they're really loud. You will hear some of them compare me based on skin color and others identify me based on gender.
different hands. Yeah. We're like all different shades, aren't Double. we? Yeah. We've got yeah. white. Yeah. I like that. Don't you like that we're all different? Yeah. Did you know that God made each yeah. one of you? Yeah. The ultimate answer to racism, negative stereotyping, and negative self-perception can only be found in the love of God and in his word. Current research supports the Bible's approach to anti-bias education versus a multicultural education. A child's worldview must be developed to recognize that love lies at the center of everything that he or she is and that all people are precious in the sight of God. Love is who God is. Without the concept of the image of God, there is no firm foundation for the worth of others. We are all portraits of God and made in his image. The cross shows how much God loves us and values his image bearers. Christ didn't die for worthless beings, and so we must recognize that we are all image bearers and worthy of love, respect, and inclusion. The biblical message of tolerance and respect must be not only integrated into the current curriculum, it must be foundational to everything that is taught. This is the only complete and permanent solution to racism and negative racial attitudes in children and in society. The following are lesson ideas based on Bible truths and designed for preschool children ages 3 to 4. These lessons and activities will encourage children to consider their own racial identities, contrast and compare themselves with others, and recognize that since God loves everyone, I should love everyone. This is a weekly overview of the eight weeks of lessons, including the Bible theme, aim, key concepts, and learning domains. This is an example of one of the lessons in the eight-week series. This lesson focuses on including everyone and is based on the Bible story of the Great Feast. The children hear the story and then participate in a number of activities, including a variety of learning domains, such as dramatic play, art, science and nature, or blocks and manipulatives. These activities reinforce the lesson being taught. Creating a party hat is a fun activity that allows the teacher time to speak with children as a group and individually about being included or excluded and how it feels to be left out. Discussion questions can be, what do you think these hats are for? Have you ever been to a party? Who did you invite? Who would Jesus want to invite to his party? Did you ever feel left out? Who do you think should be invited to Jesus's party? All of these lessons rely on a loving teacher and child relationship and use of emergent curriculum practices. Teachers who listen to their students will know when to advance the conversation regarding racial tolerance and inclusion. Children will integrate what they are learning when they create their own meaning through hands-on, multi-sensory activities that are interesting to them. Children learn by doing. This has been an overview of my practicum this term. My project is still a work in progress and I am looking forward to continuing a study that encourages children to practice respect and inclusion.